everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club, and today we're gonna to be answering the question, what do I really need to run a 5,000 BTU air conditioner off of battery and solar? Now, for those of you that really want me to get to the nitty gritty and just give you a quick overlay, I'll do that. I'll give you most of the information I have up front, and those of you that wanna wait a little bit longer so I can go through that information with you, you're more than welcome to. In my opinion, through my research and what I figured out, what I think would be a good starting point for running a 5,000 BTU AC unit, it's gonna be, you're gonna need about 600 watts of solar that's in the sun all day, so probably tiltable. 600 watts of solar, 40 amp MPPT charge controller, so you can add a little bit if you need to. You'd be okay with a 30 amp, but a 40 amp will give you a little room to expand. 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and about 400 amp hours of lithium ion batteries, or 800 amp hours of lead acid batteries, because you can only take them down to 50%. So that would give you your usable 400 amp hours. You need 400 usable amp hours of that lithium to run that AC about eight hours. Okay, and of course, then your battery bank could be dead and the next day you're, you're out of luck. So that's where the 600 watts of solar comes in. And for those of you that are wondering how much is it gonna cost you, uh, you're also gonna have to factor in wiring and some mounting hardware and stuff like that. What I came up with, and this is very rough guys, this is based off what I found and with the batteries I chose and different stuff like that. Um, for the lithium package, it probably cost you about 6,500 to get it up and running, and uh, that would last you about six years. And if you wanted to go with, uh, say, the Trojan 12 volt batteries that I'm a fan of, uh, you could probably get the system going for about $3,000 uh, off the bat. But after six years, after replacing them probably twice, you're going to end up with about 5,600 bucks uh, over the six year span. So that's the basic, basic information of what you're gonna to need to run that. Now, for those of you that want me to get into how I came up with that and what you really need and why you need it, let's get right into it. Okay, so we really wanna run this AC off battery and solar power. Of course, it makes more sense to usually run it off a generator, which is why most people do, but we're determined and we're gonna do it. So this is my best guess. This is where I would start if I was trying to run a system, uh, build a system for an AC unit that was 5,000 BTUs. Uh, for, you know, a, a camper van or a truck or an RV or anything like that, little window unit guy, this is what I think you're gonna need. Now, uh, a window unit that's 5,000 BTUs is gonna run at about 500 watts, okay? Give or take, that's pretty close to what most of them run at. They'll have a surge of about 1,000 watts here and there when the compressor kicks in, but they're gonna run at 500 watts, and so that's what we kinda need to maintain for eight hours. Eight hours is what I'm going for because to me that's a practical test of using an AC in a hot environment, you're probably gonna wanna run it about eight hours. So that's the goal, and uh, that's what we're gonna try and figure out. Now, a 5,000 BTU AC system is gonna run at 500 watts, and um, in order to get that to last eight hours, you need about 400 amp hours of battery power. Now, I ran the math on these numbers, and that all pretty much checks out to me, more or less, but I also wanted to do a real world test to make sure that everything was kind of checking out with my math and using it in the real world. So last week I did a test where I ran my 15,000 BTU air conditioner on my RV, which runs at 1500 watts for an hour and a half on 200 amp hours of lithium ion batteries, okay? And that takes three times the power as the AC we're trying to run today. So it made it an hour and a half. If we had been using the window unit that we're trying to run today, it would have made it three times as long because it's a third of the power. So instead of an hour and a half, we would have been at four and a half hours. Since we want eight, you double that, and we end up with 400 amp hours of battery bank. Okay, so that's where I think you need to start when running this smaller system, and that my math checks out to our real, real world test in the RV, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. You can watch that other video if you want as well to check that out. But it makes sense, and it checks out, so that's what we're gonna go with. Now, when choosing the battery, lithium, is the way to go. It's designed to take heavy draws and charge fast and all that good stuff. It's really designed for this kind of setup. And each battery only weighs about 20 pounds compared to 60 or 80 with a lead acid battery. So it saves you hundreds of pounds of weight in the long run between battery banks. But I went with the Green Life batteries. They're 100 amp hours a piece, four of them. That's 400 amp hours right there. If you wanna do this with lead acid, I would recommend like Trojan, they're a good battery, but they have Trojan 12 volt batteries that have 150 amp hours a piece. You would need six of these for a grand total of 900 amp hours because you can only use 50% of lead acid batteries before you have to recharge them. So cut 900 in half, where do we end up? 450 
amp hours of usable battery power from that battery bank. So that's how many you're going to need of those. Just keep that in mind when you go to lead, you need twice as much as the usable amps that you're, gonna, you're going for. If you need to use all 400, you need 800 amp hours of lead acid because you can only drain them to 50% and back up. I just want to make sure that's clear to remind you guys about that. So it takes a lot of lead acid batteries to do this. But now that we know we need 400 amp hours to start, we're going to move on to solar because if you just have the batteries at the end of the day, you made it. You made it eight hours. Yay. But your batteries are dead and it's nighttime and you're going to have no battery power tomorrow. So you're going to have to run a generator or plug in a shore power or start your car or whatever you're going to do to put that energy back in. So you have to have solar. Now, I would recommend as much solar as you can really fit if you're doing an AC system like this. But I would say bare minimum place to start is going to be 600 watts. The AC unit uses around 500 watts and uh, you're going to need more than that, hopefully to try and keep up with it. So I'd recommend 600 watts of solar uh, just to kind of pad that out throughout the day. And if it gets a little cloudy or it's not the right angle of sun, then the battery bank is going to keep up with the, you know, the difference. But I'd say you need around 600 watts to start uh, just to get you kind of through the day. And that's in direct sun, so you may want to get tilting solar panels so you can really get the most sun you possibly can out of the day because it only this this math is really kind of set up for a perfect scenario where you're getting full power all day that won't be the case depending on where you live in the country and things like that but i recommend you start at 600 watts you're going to need a charge controller to run that 600 watt solar array so i would recommend a 40 amp mppt charge controller mppt because you can really get the most out of your panels with one of those and while a 30 amp system would probably run, you'd be fine for those panels, I recommend getting the 40 amp charge controller. So if you want to add some panels, you can. And you don't have to buy another charge controller. Okay, so go with a 40 amp MPPT charge controller and that's going to set you up just fine. And then uh, you, you're going to need your inverter. I would recommend a bare minimum for this small AC unit as a 2000 pure sine wave inverter. Okay, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, I like Xantrax myself, they've been working really well for me, but that's what you need. If you're going to run other stuff on top of your AC throughout the day, then you're probably going to want to go with a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, but bare minimum, this video is about the AC, so that's what we're focusing on. You can get away with a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Okay, now the last thing that you're going to need, you're pretty much all set up, you just need some wiring and some mounting hardware, and you're good to go. Okay, and that's going to depend on the length and the size of your vehicle and all that good stuff to try and figure out. So you'll have to do a little bit of research on that. But those are the ba basic components that you're going to need to get this going. And uh, I think that about covers it for the main setup. Now when it comes to cost of this system, I did throw together a rough estimate just to point you guys in the right direction, give you a baseline of what you might be looking at to build these systems. And this is the way that it's broken down, okay? For the solar panels, 700 bucks for 600 watts. You can find 100 watt solar panels for around 112 bucks, 120 bucks online. I've seen them, so you can find them there. That's about what I'm going to say, 700 bucks for that. The inverter, the Xantrax Pure Sine Wave 2000 watt inverter is around 600 bucks. That's what I'd recommend. Then you have a 40 amp MPPT charge controller. That's going to run you around $200 depending on where you look, 200 bucks. And then you need four 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries if you're going that route. Each one of those is 1200 bucks. So for four of them, that puts you up at 4,800 bucks just for the lithium battery bank. If you go with the lead acid side, the batteries that I used were six Trojan 12 volt, 150 amp hour batteries. Found them online for 222 bucks a piece. And uh, when you add all that up, it's like 1300 bucks. But you're gonna have to change those out every year and a half to two years, okay? The, le the lithiums will last six or more because uh, they have 2,000 cycles minimum, maybe three or 4,000, depending on how you use them. Lead acids only have 500 cycles, so year and a half, two years, depending on how you use them. So the totals, well, and then the, uh, the wiring and the hardware, I just threw in 200 bucks, because it's really gonna depend on you, how much wiring you need, the length, the hardware, blah, blah. I'd say 200's a basic start point. So the total for the lithium system is going to be 6,500 bucks and it'll last you six years. The starting on the Trojan lead acid side is going to be 3,000 bucks. 
if you if you take that to six years, it's about fifty six hundred bucks. Okay, but you might also want to factor in the extra gas for towing around the extra three hundred pounds of lead uh, with with that system. Okay, so I, I think it kind of works out close to being the same, but the lithium is going to cut a lot of weight out, and uh, they really are designed for this kind of thing. Heavy power draw, heavy charging. They love it. They'll do it all day long. Lead acids, it's pretty hard on them. So I leave all that stuff up to you, but that's a really good cap rundown of what I think you're going to need to get this whole system up and running. And uh, you're going to have to build onto it a little bit here and there, depending on where you live and what your applications are and how you use it and blah, blah, blah. But I hope that gives you a pretty good indication of what you're going to need to start. I'll be doing two more videos on bigger AC units later on this month. Uh, so look forward to those. I also have a website called fullmoonadventureclub.com. And uh, you should definitely go over there and check that out. It has all these videos uh, lined up according to category. And at some point, I'm really hoping that I can get some solar systems, everything you need set up in different categories that you can just either buy through like a drop shipping site or Amazon. But it's everything that I would buy to set into a system, you know, to run different things. And I'm hoping I can set that up for you guys there just to make this easier because I know it's everybody's number one question and I'd love to be able to help everybody out with that. So check out the website at fullmoonadventureclub.com and uh, when that's up, it'll be up. But right now all the videos are there as well and they're all nice and labeled and cate categorized. So check that out for me. And also like, share, subscribe, all that stuff really helps me out and keeps these videos coming. And ask me any questions in the comment below. I will sure try and answer them. I think that about covers it. My name is Jim with FullMoonAdventureClub.com. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching and happy camping.